think you understand now a little bit more about emphysema. Can you tell me um, why you're short of breath? Well, because I don't have a surface area, like, you know, no fat, and so it's harder for me to breathe, you know, when I do, I can't cough, but I'm supporting volume, but I can't get it up. That's right. And you also have lost capacity of your lungs to fill because of the air travel. opportunity for change, talk to discuss a plan, you know, the cessation plan, set goals, re, uh, you know, be set uh, for reassessing and things like that, but since we only have 15 minutes, we're going to put that on hold and assume that it, it, we're not going to do that, so uh, how do you feel about smoking? <laughs> well, I understand, it's very hard to, to um, stop smoking. Very difficult process, but it is something you should consider. We have a lot of literature that can help if you have problems, so maybe you could consider that um, from the next method. So, besides the breath smoking, we also have other factors that lead to emphysema. Um, uh, uh, One is as you mentioned, get older, the, <coughs> the uh, cartilage, and that the um, physical work as well, the elastic. and then try not to drink too much liquids with your meal so that you, if you've got fat, drink the liquids throughout the day other than that. But you don't want to fill up your stomach with too much liquids while you're eating those small meals. And make sure you have a lot of protein because that's going to help you um, rebuild cells better as, as best as you can and help you stay healthier. Um, but we're also going to discuss some um, lung, clearance, uh, lung clearance exercise because I know you, you talked about the mucus that's in your lungs and you need to kind of try to get that out, and especially in the morning. So you're going to do this thing called huff coughing. So when you huff cough, 
I'm going to demonstrate it, and I'd like you to kind of repeat it back to me. You're going to, like, you're fogging up the window, you're going to kind of, but in a forceful way, go, oh. So you can feel it coming up, and then once you do that a couple times, then you're going to bring up, like you're going to talk a little bit, like you're going to bring it up and spit it out um, to get, clear your lungs so that you can breathe a little bit better. And then your second thing that you're going to do is a diaphragmic breathing exercise, which I want you to sit up straight, put your shoulders back, and then hold on to your ribcage when you breathe in. I want you to feel your ribcage go out and breathe out your ribcage within, because we're trying to get the, the air all the way to the bottom of your lungs so that you can get as much air as possible. So breathe in. Show me how you, how you would do it. So shoulders back, and go breathe in. Fill your ribcage. Yeah. And then this next thing you're going to do is purse lip breathing. So especially when you're kind of getting out of breath or you're going on a walk, you're going to need to get more oxygen. So the purse lip breathing is going to be, um, you're going to breathe in for two seconds with your nose. And then you're going to breathe out for five seconds, but like you're blowing out candles. So and we'll do it one more time with each other. So that's going to kind of calm down your breathing and make sure you get lungs, air into your lungs. And exercise is good, so it's good that you're walking. Um, building up on your exercise walks would be best. And then also to prevent illness, you're going to need to get a flu shot and a pneumonia vaccine to, because you don't want to get sick. If you get sick, it's going to take your disease process down. And um, the symptoms I want you to report back to your doctor are increased shortness of breath, if it's harder to breathe, um, if you have more sputum, so when you're spitting up in the puff coughing in the morning, if it's yellow, if you're having to find yourself leaning forward to breathe a lot, that's going to be important that you get back to, to let your doctor know. If you find that you have blue tinge around your fingertips, that means that you're not getting enough oxygen to your extremities like your hands and feet and stuff like that, let us know. If you have any major illnesses, you should let us know. Or if you're feeling confused or if you start to feel depressed about your condition.